more or nothing. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of More or Nothing with Ryan and Max. It is a Champions Cup special, but it is a somewhat saddened special for many many reasons more more from max's perspective i think rather than uh, clearly the uh, night that wills had on uh, over the weekend but uh, let's start with friday night lights for max and bristol connor mate the dream is over the european adventure falls at the first hurdle how are we it's just it's just very disappointing really just somber, really, gents. Very somber. I'm still sort of cheerful. Don't worry, my New Year's resolution is still intact. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you Bullshit. were trying to... <laughs> Bullshit. Believe me. Bullshit. You... Well, look, some of the words, some of the words you've been throwing in the group, I'm having to fucking Google them, mate, to know what they mean. And one of them didn't oh, even right. come up with a meaning. What was the one you put... What was the one that, the one that you put in the group? You were... You were... Entropic. Entropic. <laughs> What the fuck does entropic mean? It's like the antithesis of ecstatic. It's okay. These things happen. Now. And then the one, and then the one he just used there before we came, we went live on here that you understood, Mark, and I didn't. I think I've got to up my um. Morose. Up my, my dictionary. I love it. I've got to up my quick. I better think of a word. I can't think of a word. <laughs> At the very moment I needed to think of the word for words, I can't think of a word. Yeah, well, I'm not. It's all a ruse, right? It's all a ruse. I'm really very low IQ. They just, I just have a strange memory for um, for fun words when I read. That's it. <laughs> Max, are you sad? Genuinely, like, have you have you messed up your New Year's resolution? You're sad, aren't you? You've been sad. I haven't messed it up. I haven't messed it up. It's just like, you know, I don't know. I just, I just you. When you get to this point in your career, you're not sure how many more of these sort of opportunities you have, and then they become quite numbered these days. And when you're younger, they're, they're, they're sort of they seem almost infinite. Time seems to go on and on, and then as you get to my age, everything's very becomes quite vital, doesn't it? So there's that, and then there's also sort of the. I was actually thinking about this when I see the crowds who come to games, like especially traveling supporters, and you could just. There is a sense of responsibility, isn't there, almost? Well, not responsibility, but pressure. Um, and you just feel, you also feel bad in that regard. They, the Bristol fans travelled very well for that game and seeing their faces after the game was quite um, disheartening. But such is the way... Not to, this not to put even more of a dampener on it, sorry. Mm. Not to put even more of a dampener on it, but would it even matter if you had won? Because I'm pretty sure, because Sarri's won with a bonus point, you would have still been knocked out of Europe. Or would you have gone... I don't know. Challenge that, yeah, but this is like the butterfly effect, isn't it? it changes everything. Then Sarri's might, yeah, Sarri's players might <clears> change, their, change the way they perform and how they're psychologically preparing for a game, and then that kind of squanders their performance or ups it. But who can say? Yeah, very true. Very true. Um, we've got to get onto the the main talking point of that one. Mm. Your old mate, Josh Caulfield, the sloth, the, the ogre. <laughs> The cave troll of oh, Moria. Oh. I know. <laughs> I oh, love mate. No, no, no. Wait, Hold wait, wait. A minute. I, I love him dearly. No, no, no. You, just because your boys lost at the weekend, he got red carded for something that he absolutely shouldn't have been red carded for. Mm. You, you can't then go easy on him. I mean, it. looking at it, it's a mistake. You, you can oh, tell it's a mistake. Not only is it a mistake, mm. but as he's trying to climb over that bloke, and he's obviously a... Fucking clumsy second row, like they all are, an absolute nightmare. Like the second rows are the reason I have no toenails left because oh, of moles and treading on people's feet just at random times. But the big fella, not only accidentally, he gets a boot in his face from I think it was Carl Sinkler, maybe was it? Who was in front yeah, of him? To Carl Sinkler, he gets the- booted in the chops as it's happening as well. But they don't look at that. Why don't they look at that? I think I don't think it's done on outcome now. There's no there's no sort of there's no homicide and there's no sort of homicide and manslaughter anymore. It's just straight up outcome. So anything accidental now is that's it. It's just the consequence. And that's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to be sort of penalised on. 
which is sad, I think. I think yeah, that's you, bad because I... rugby is such a chaotic sport with such an infinite variable of different situations in the breakdown, in the contact area, the way people move their bodies, the way they drop into contact and avoid contact, the way people tackle. It's, it's bizarre to me, but such is the way that I think this um, lawsuit that's being put forward has put a lot of um, pressure on these governing bodies to make a difference. And they see this as the route to do it. I got sent off uh, for accidentally stamping on someone's chest when, uh, and that ruled me out of the that ruled me out of the quarterfinal for the um, for the World Cup. It didn't rule me out because of my yellow card. It ruled me out because Vernon Cotter said I was stupid for stamping on someone's chest. But I was accidentally he grabbed hold of my foot and I tripped and then full boot on his chest and I got done for stamping. But you've like. This is how I tried to look at it. If if it wasn't his head, let's say it was his leg, mm, would it fine. have been a different outcome? Agreed. Yes, that's true. I, it would be a different outcome. It wouldn't even be looked at. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I've got this wrong. But I I can't see why if it's accidental and he's not meant to have done it. And also, whilst he's getting, whilst he's getting a boot shoved into his mouth. He's putting his boot in someone else's mouth. He's not meant to do it. I just think it's it's wrong. And we'll get on to the we'll get on to the Northampton one in a bit. I'm sure um, around Munster. But that one, I thought there was a there's another moment in that where you look at it and go, yeah, it probably was a red card. So I think they're very different. I don't think your big man there, your fellow from the Goonies, he shouldn't have uh, he shouldn't have copped a red card. And then might have been a different story for you boys. It but changes Connor, it. tough old place to go. Dare I say good night out? Yeah, Galway was um, interesting. Very quaint, nice little city. Lovely locals. Uh, got to catch up with a few of the a few of the old Connachtmen. Uh, Neasy, Uncle Neasy. That was a great, great uh, reunion. Um, yeah, it was good fun. Gaily bands, live music, all that shebang. It's a lovely spot. I forget the winger's name, but if he had scored that, if I think he, I don't think he was in touch. I think his heel had just lifted up. But if he had. Yeah. If he got that try, that would have been try, try of the season. season. Like, finish of the what? season. I've never seen anything like it. He obviously goes and gets one straight after, but what a finish. Max, rewind us a bit. Explain to us what has happened, but to the neutral or to somebody who's not a massive rugby nose, it's a massive boot to the head and is almost like a dead cert red if you don't really... Uh, you're relatively new to rugby. But explain to us what you what happened on the field. I can't remember who carried the ball. Was it Carl or was it was Carl the first cleaner? But basically, someone's carried the ball. Uh, Carl Sinclair's gone to clean out the carrier. Finley Bielan was the tackler. He's lying on the other side of the breakdown, so on the side the uh, Bristol Bears, our team are coming, who have possession of the ball. Uh, on the way in, the second cleaner, Josh Caulfield, in the kerfuffle and the melee that is the breakdown, he wears a shoe from Carl Sinclair during the carry or and clean. And then in his epic mammoth biomechanic clumsiness, he manages to implant his boot onto Finley Bielham's poor, poor face, which resulted in a red card because obviously having eight studs on the end of 128 clicks, yeah, it's always gonna be a bit violent. and. You can see the sort of uh, the, the damage on uh, Finley's poor, poor visage. With that in mind, does that mean that you guys as a squad were not incensed by, you know, a decision where suddenly that's that swung everything, your European adventure, how you guys are playing in the game, everything against you. And there's that kind of feeling of being hard done by when actually the way you've just described it, there's an element of well, fair play. That's that's what's happened. Well, yeah, that's just the way it is now. That's just rugby at this point, and you just got to get on with it. And fourteen men isn't a death sentence anymore. You can you can win a game with with uh, fourteen men. It's it's not the end of the world. It obviously makes things more difficult, but it can be done, especially if, if it, it's sort of from the second row. In my in my opinion. Also, can I just say, Finley Beelam, lovely chat, very odd. We are in an odd off. There was like this strange circumstance at the end of the game. We're like, you alright, mate? He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good man. You're right. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And then he goes, yeah, you're right. And then I was like, all right, let's just keep going. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it went on for a bit. I was like, this is an odd chap, and I really like him already. Please and that was the only thing we helmet. said to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting lad. 
Did you uh, have the helmet on? Did you have the Gryffindor helmet no, on? No, well, I'm still waiting for the, um, the clearance for that. But yeah, good chat. Didn't know he was Australian. Had no idea. Uh, oh, what, well, Australian Irish? Very Did nice, you not? Very nice man, no. <laughs> mm. uh, what, was the, what was the vibe in the dressing room afterwards? Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was very, um, it was flat. It was very flat, Mark. It wasn't, it wasn't good. It was, um, there was a fair bit of soul searching in the, in the floor. Um, Stevie Lutua gave us a bit of a dress down. Uh, Carl Sinclair said a few words. Um, it was, hopefully it was uh, a transformative sort of time for the team. That's what I'm hoping. But, um, yeah, it was, it wasn't the best. But to put it bluntly, yeah. fucking hell, are you fucking so, depressing me. Yeah, I'm getting. Jeez, I, I want to get like one of those support dogs Jesus, tomorrow. I'm trying yeah. to order one. Yeah. Fucking hell. You know what oh, it's like, like right when it gets like, like that. Evening. It's everything. It's this is you. Well, actually, you've got children. Literally, this is all you live and breathe. <laughs> so, like, your self worth is based upon how you perform on the weekend. And right now. As a human, I am failing in the in the sort of environment. You know what I mean? I am a lesser no, lesser stag out you're there. Not, you're not. <laughs> we've, we've got you back. I'm a lesser you. organism. And by that by that alone, we are status chasing apes. That's what we are. We're status chasing like sapiens. You've got to be able to park it, Max. Leave it there. Don't no, 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 don't not. bring it too much into the podcast. You've got to leave it there. Leave it there now. Just park <laughs> no, it. Is that is that it? Okay, so that's an order. Okay, because <laughs> we get we don't want people topping themselves whilst listening to our podcast. We'll get we'll get blamed okay, for that. Okay. Although Ryan, after that result and knowing that like they were out of Europe and knowing that all of this had happened, part of me was imagining beers. Max, yeah, but Max like sticking to his happiness thing. So in the changing room, he's all like, "Yay! I promise that I'll still be good." Whilst everyone's like crying. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he, it wasn't about happy. It was just to be. Le- I think it was le- to be less sad. Was it? No, it was to be happy. Happier. I was to be happy. Guys, okay. I'm fine. I'm gonna be fine. I haven't. I haven't capitulated. Well, I'd fucking hate to see. You. I'd hate to see you fucking bad day. If this is a good day, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think we need a catch up. I think we all need to get back to London, get back in the shipping container or something like that. <laughs> Just get back down there with a few beers. Well, from the depths of uh, the Bristol mindset out in Ireland to the highs of the uh, Gloucester mindset for Ryan and his Fijian cohort. And I'm definitely not drinking Adam Hastings on the beers with you. Talk us through it. Yeah, boys, the uh, the old uh, New Year's resolution took another turn for the worse. <clears throat> oh, I'll be honest, it took another turn for the worse at the weekend. I failed again. I've, uh, I'm going to admit it. It was out there on Instagram. There was a beer and I drank. So it's definitely not dry January. It's dry-ish still. But you'll be proud of me. I didn't touch the hard stuff. So... I uh, stuck to Guinness. <laughs> I stuck to Guinness. You had 19 so. pints of Guinness. <laughs> well done, mate. Legend. Thank you. Max, are you proud of me? I'm really proud of you, bro. Thank you very much. But um, we won't talk too much about the, the rugby. Obviously, Gloucester flying in the uh, Challenge Cup. Uh, did it with uh, a, a good friend of yours, I believe, or someone that you would have played alongside. Matt Banahan, Matt? Oh, top boy. He's doing well at the commentary gig, isn't he? He's been he's been very good. Yeah, he's a good fella. So it was myself and myself and Banners. Um, but yeah, Leone Nakarawa, obviously he was twenty fourth man, so he wasn't even playing. And then Nico Nico visits ta- visits town, brings his Fijian mate from Bristol, and uh, go for a couple of pints, and then we end up in Albert Tuasui's garage. <laughs> Max, really? how'd you do drinking grog, drinking carver? great day out that sounds wonderful well yeah it was it was so yeah ended up back at his till about half four i'd say in the morning just drinking carver knowing that i then had to try and get a train back to heathrow and then fly back the next day so yeah bit dusty um but caught up with Hasto as well good to see him um obviously back in the scotland squad and he's tearing up for uh for gloucester 
So I'm sure he will. Uh, he'll be looking to do well because we'll talk about Captain Finn in a minute, won't we? Um, but it's made it even more likely that Haster will definitely be playing a backup. Everyone knew it already because of Finn Russell at the moment, the way he's going. But um, yeah, it was good to see my old mate Haster. He dropped me off at the airport. He's doing well, although he keeps talking about this witch doctor, and he's like, oh, it, uh, he's, and now he's got the way. Now he's worried. He's like, well, I worry if I see one, like it might, you know, do something weird to me. So maybe I shouldn't. So I'm like, ah, stay away from me. He's talking about crystals and all sorts. Yeah. Do you not remember when we met with him last time after all those injuries? He wanted to go and see a witch doctor. Yeah, he thinks there was. He thinks there's been something placed upon him. What was he saying he about it? This he's time? got really bad luck. Oh well, he was he was saying he he was talking about it. He was talking about it again. We, we he drove me to um, he dropped me at Heathrow, so we we're having a good old chat about it. And he was like, you know, I, I do want to go and see one, but I'm worried that they might do something to me that's weird and like, you know, put a spell on me that I can never get off. And I was like, oh. But he said he had forgotten his crystals for the game today, and he played pretty well, scored a try. So he was like, you know, I'm just a, a little bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't work. <laughs> Do you believe in any of that, Ryan? I don't know. Uh, Are you superstitious? I'm, uh, I'm a, I'm, yeah, I am very, very superstitious. Very. You know that. You know I'm very superstitious. Like I am. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it, but I'm a gypsy in all all senses. <laughs> so what stops you from believing in like tarot cards and stuff like that? I'm sort of with it. Like I, I bet, like. If like see like these mediums and things like that, I would mm. be worried about going to one of them in case they told me something like, "This is how you're gonna die," or you know, like you see in films where they just get up and walk out the room, and like I can't do this anymore, and then I'd be panicking about everything. No, no, no I'm I'm quite bad for believing in stuff like that. So you I'm believe weird over things. You believe like you don't that. have a freedom of choice. You believe everything is preordained. I don't know if I go that deep. I'm not that deep a thinker, Max. I'm just know that. <laughs> There's a few weird there's a few weird things out there, like but I'm also very easily persuaded. Like if someone was like, you know, like the law of attraction thing. Mm. Oh, you can talk to me about law of attraction or, you know, sell me poo pills and I'll, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'll I'll just buy into something full hearted. How are yeah, those the NFTs of, going well? The law of attraction is nutty, isn't it? Like the law of coincidence. Yeah. But if the system, say, say that is a thing, right? Imagine how hopelessly complex that must be that all these lives that have got a sort of point of view and they all intertwine in ways to make this law of attraction rule the law, as, it's, as it were, work. Like, could you even fathom how ridiculously complex that must be on like a mathematical scale? Like if you put an algorithm onto that, Anyway, that's a weird. Let's. I got. I got weird there. But anyway, let's get back to the rugby. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I sorry, you just flicked something in my brain, and I was like, "This is this is quite <laughs> this is quite stimulating to think about if it is a thing." Uh, but anyway, a lovely weekend catching mm. up with my Fijians, tapping back into my Fijian roots with Leoni Nakarawa, Nico Matawalu, the likes of some of those boys. Rasonge, I have uh, Thokathangi. Mm. Um, who's the other one? Butitu, mate. Cass have got some some absolute powers. And big Albert Tuasui, mate. He came on wrecking ball of a man. But yeah, so you know, find yourself drinking grog at four o'clock in the morning in Albert Tuasui's uh, <laughs> garage in uh, in the middle of Gloucester. I love it though. You know, like when the there's a few other boys there that are obviously from around the the area, and <laughs> they were slightly younger Fijians, and they wanted to leave, and <laughs> so they were like. like Oh, um, we, we we're gonna. Can we go now? And Albert says, like you know, we're, that's it. Yes, you can leave after one more bowl of cover. <laughs> so they have to ask like the elder whether they can go. And, no, you can leave once we have one more giant eight liter bowl of cover. <laughs> they're like, okay, thank you, okay, thank you. That is one of the most rugby sort of apre matches ever. I love it. I love it. Throwback to Lennon Irish days. Who's the worst like leader that you've had at that who just would never let anybody go? Chris Halifier was pretty bad. He'd like you just have to stay until you couldn't really walk. <laughs> like sun was coming up, big guy, that kind of vibe. It's an all nighter on grog and beers. It's mental. Tantastic sweets everywhere because your tum is completely numb from the um, alkali agents in the um, carver. It's mental. But yeah, great fun. 
great first impressions of um, the social thing that is rugby. I loved it. Right. Well, speaking of rugby, let's uh, move on to our dearest Glasgow Warriors getting the old payback on Toulon, uh, who have had a pretty shitty campaign. Uh, but yeah, Wills, give us your thoughts. Blood deal, boys. All that cash, all that fame, and they I know they listen. They they threw over a bomb squad. It wasn't a very good team. They sent mm. sent the shags. They were like, listen, we're pretty much out of this. And fair play to Glasgow. They did well. Got a bonus point win. Um, Hugh Jones, boys. He's obviously heard us. He's obviously listened to what we're talking about, saying that Cam Redpath is firing on all cylinders with Finn Russell. So he's like, right, watch this, then, boys. I like my game. And Shaggy has absolutely torn Toulon a new one. He was outstanding. Sione to a blotto. So it just makes that centre partnership so much more interesting. What did you call him? Fuck, unbelievable. Shaggy. Say that again? That's a Welsh thing, isn't it? Shug. Shuggy. Shug. Oh, right. Do you know what, why he got that name? Yeah, isn't that that's what Welsh people call Hugh? Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Good to know. Am I right, Mark? Hold it's on. Actually... You claim to be Welsh. Yeah, I'm like a terrible Welshman. Look at my face. I'm like a brown Welshman. Um, uh, I'm. Uh, isn't, it's actually an old Scottish nickname, funnily enough. Commonly used as a nickname for the name Hugh. Shug. Oh, that, do you know what? That makes so much sense because there was a Shuggy who was our Welsh strength and conditioning coach and he obviously came to Scotland and he said, my name's Hugh. So people called him Shuggy. And that is that all makes sense now. I thought it was a Welsh thing. There you are. Oh. Yeah. But um, anyway, on fire. That's it. Glasgow go through. How important that bloody win would have been down in Exeter, though, that should have been. And I know we've had enough moaning about it, so I won't go on about it. I won't drag it on too long. But um, yeah, that could have been that could have been very different. I, I, I mean, I haven't done the mathematics yet, boys, because we've literally, it's Sunday evening, the games have just finished. But Glasgow now go away to Harlequins down there at the Stoop. But I wonder, I think they might have, I think they might have got a bloody home home 16, last 16. So we know how important the um, the home ties are because it obviously carries on then, doesn't it, through the quarterfinals, the semifinals. So I think uh, I think they were hard done by last week. But they go through last 16 and uh, they'll be happy with that. Can they do it against Harlequins? Oof, it's a big ask, but go down there, it'll be a good game of rugby. So yeah, I'm going to try and get commentating on that one, boys, and we'll... Uh, Maybe hook up for a few beers because it'll be February or March or something by then so I can definitely drink. I can go on the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah, generously. April time. Max, we're in. We're in. We'll go in. Uh... April? It's fucking ages away. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll come and support your commentating. Already. Let's move on to Northampton versus Munster. Amazing fight back from the Saints despite being down to 14 men and really putting themselves in, in in a the driving seat, if you will, as in people are looking at them going, these are serious contenders. Obviously, we know that in the Prem, but here I think they've probably, there's a couple of pricked ears on the big, big heavyweights looking at Saints going, ooh, probably don't want to be playing them. Do we think? Yeah, we've been saying it the whole time. I'm not surprised. Don't know why you're surprised. I'm not surprised. Those boys are mustard. They've, they're coming together rather nicely. And to do it with, as you say, 14 men away at Toman Park, um, outstanding. Or did anyone see all the, the, the Twitter debates on who's the better six, Omani or um, Courtney Laws? Oh, it was getting juicy. I really enjoyed it. There's just this massive, massive partisan line from any Irish supporter and any English supporter. It's, it's, it's quality. really enjoyed it. Just everyone flying. What do you think then, Max? About Omani the Courtney Lawrence. I think they're both quite... They're both sixes, but they're both very different. <laughs> Stay on the fence, old Dean. It's just on the fence. Um, Splinters up your ass, mate. Come on. I think at this point, I'm, 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 I'm in Camp Laws. He's, he's daddy right now. He's King Midas. Someone commented on our, uh, our clip, actually, that we put mm. out saying, sorry to burst your bubbles, boys, but... He's, he's actually came out and said that he would come out of retirement to play for the Lions. Oh, is, that that? Is, that, is that someone just... Oh, I didn't is that know someone that. Is someone just fucking gaslighting me on there? What's going on there, Mark? Come on, you're the one that should have all this knowledge. Uh, no no knowledge. Absolutely zero. Um, I hadn't. I didn't know that he'd said that. I don't think he'd ruled himself out of playing for the Lions. I didn't realise he'd actually gone, 
I don't care if I'm hobbled and retired for like a year. I'd, I'd still come out of retirement for it. I didn't realise that. Um, well, yeah, I think anyone would, wouldn't they, really? So still stands. Still, Max said it first. So that's yeah, all that matters. Exactly. Max said it first. You heard it here first. More or nothing. And when he's captain of the Lions next year, everyone will go, those blokes know their fucking gravy. They, they know their shit. I didn't, however, I didn't agree with the, 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 the team who selected Courtney Laws as man of the match. I thought he had a brilliant game, but I thought Finn Smith was, was consummate. He was a big part of why, why Northampton was so dominant and how they, well, not so dominant, but how they kept themselves in that game, um, despite losing a man and just his, his, his kicking game. Generally, it was just outstanding. Boys, that drop goal from mm. like... 45 metres or something stupid like that. He he ran the game and now the question that people are starting to ask and it's in my mind now is is it Marcus Smith or is it Finn Smith playing and starting for England? Because Northampton are the top of the Prem boys. They're fucking flying. They're killing it in Europe. <sighs> no one would have thought that. What? Two, three months ago and now suddenly again... Which Smith is it that started the ten? Not will it be Smith? Which Smith? Mm, well, who, who's who's your guy? Who's your guy, Ryan? Oh, bloody hell! Do you know what? If do you know what? <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it, if you want him to, if you want him to flourish, if you want to grow him as a man and as a player, I would start him. I would start him in the Six Nations, especially because they've got. England have got Italy first up, so chuck him out there, start him in a Six Nations game, first game, let him have it. And even if you put Marcus Smith at 15, like we said we said at some point, I know loads of people go, he's not a 15, he shouldn't be playing there. But um, oh, now I'm starting to think, maybe I would like to see Finn Smith you know, jump in there. And But I, you know, I'm careful because I don't want Marcus Smith to hear this because we want to still try and get him on the podcast. So mm. we've got to be careful with, uh, with how we put this out there. But... Both very good players, Max. If I'm going to sit on the fence, both very good players. But I would like to see young Finn Smith have a crack and uh, and get a start for England. I think he's more the Steve Borfitt mould of a ten, isn't he? Would you Would you agree with that statement? I think there's something that's more like game managery about Finn in comparison to Marcus. But I, I don't know. I don't really know tens very well. But um, that's what I'd say about that. That is that's a really good question. Matt, that's, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe, maybe Borfoot looks at it and goes, yeah, I can, and he can sort of mould him into what he wants. I feel like Marcus Smith isn't someone that can get told or sort of been, you know, this is how we want you to play a little bit more because of the way he is. And I wouldn't want to do that for Marcus Smith. But Finn Smith, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great shout. What about um, your old mate Zach Mercer's uh, comments about Borfoot and the way that he, <laughs> he came out? Yeah, I feel like, you reckon he was like that? Do you reckon it was that candid and the press were just like, we can just, yeah, this is lovely. He ain't coming home anytime soon. He's not playing for England. Oh, man. That wasn't good, was it? I don't know. If, I don't think, no, you shouldn't have done it like that. But fair yeah, enough. But maybe you get I'm, so I'm, pissed at such a, for such a long time at being left out, though, Max, that you're like, I, I, I gave up this massive contract in France, living, and we saw we had him on the show. He's got yeah. his swimming pool and everything. I gave it all up to basically come and make sure that I could be playing a World Cup for England. That doesn't yeah. happen. And then suddenly he's not even getting picked for an, a post kind of World Cup England. He's probably just like, fuck, I'm... I might as well just say what I think, which isn't going to help him in the long run. But isn't it quite nice? A bit of honesty, candor. You no, know, I, 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 I do. I enjoy. I enjoy the candor. Absolutely. I just, I don't know. You just got to play the politics slightly more. But I guess maybe this game is way too political as it is. But if if um if, if Zach Mercer at this point, coming off the back of his Montpellier um, top. Katar's player of the year, etc. Definitely should have been involved, but he's had a um, obviously a, a sort of season that's been a bit um, what's the word? It's just been hamstrung by injury, um, so it's it's difficult for him to be sort of I don't know demanding selection at this point. But um, I do recognise, I, yeah, I, I I do empathise with his um, frustration and not being selected. Absolutely. I um. We were doing the punch stuff on the side of the pitch and he was there 
<clears throat> excuse me, he was there um, sort of walking about and speaking to fans and stuff. And I was shouting over. So I was like, Finn, Scotland will still have you. And he was like, mate, up to Finn. Fucking, I'm still on Finn Smith. I was shouting, Zach, Scotland will still have you. Get on the phone to Gregor. And he was like, I don't think I'm qualified for Scotland. I was like, yes, you are. You like, He was there from the age of eight years old, but apparently he's not. But he couldn't work it out. He was like, mate, I don't think I am. And I was like, go and check. Go and check. Give Gregor a call. <laughs> <laughs> and he's literally like, I don't think I am. I was like, right. Let's, let's. So you never know. They might as well have a crack at it, Scotland, because he's playing out of his skin at the moment. And he's a different type of eight. He's not everyone's type of number eight, but he's got something a little bit different, hasn't he, that, that a lot of them don't have. So, um, yeah, it was good to see. I'll tell you another funny one as well. We were obviously doing comms and all the chat and the build-up was about Lewis Rees Samet, the NFL, and him going over there. Um, and... Uh, and then in commentary, someone, I think it was Hasto put a kick across and Ollie Thorley um, couldn't get there in time. And I was like, Lewis Reese Samet would have got that. <laughs> right. And so we're laughing and then we're chatting about it. And I was like, do you reckon he's watching now? Do you reckon he's, he's probably watching, isn't he? And, uh, and Bannon's like, no, no, I think he's on a flight. He's on a flight to, uh, to Florida. And he was like, but in first class, he'll probably, he'll probably get signal. And next minute, <laughs> Ding, ding, Instagram. It's a picture of him in first class with his phone saying, I am watching it, boys, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is so good. So good from him. Like, still on his way over to the NFL, but still thinking about his mates back at Gloucester. Fair play to him. So, uh, <laughs> hey, there's another one. We've got to get him on, boys. Once he's over there, we've got to get him on. We'll get. We'll do the double. We'll go out there, mate. We'll go to for the San Diego Seven or the Vegas Sevens, right? We'll go there, Vegas Sevens. He'll be there anyway, like mm, partying it up, and then we'll normally do a live show from there. He has got. After speaking to Hasto, boys, he has literally got the world like everything ahead of him for whatever he wants to do in his life. <laughs> it's crazy. What do you mean? We'll chat more. We'll why chat more. You, off here, but just some of the off now. Well, uh, some of the offers he's had, but he's got like a... And, and I was speaking to Hester about him and, you know, we've had him on here and he was pretty frank, wasn't he? He didn't hold back. But Hester's like, you know, it, the way he is, he said everything that he's got going for him, like he's got a TV... Has he got a TV show or is a TV show coming out? He's got like a documentary about him. He's obviously got all these brand deals. Hester, you know what Hester's like? He's very materialistic. He's like, mate, he gets free car. He gets petrol card. <laughs> you know, like a petrol card. <laughs> But the thing Hayes has said is like it hasn't changed him. He still like finishes straight back to his family, like real good mates with his brother. Like it won't change him. He's twenty two, um, but he's still the same. But yeah, some of the stuff is just like he's got everything right there in front of him, isn't he? And so you know, one of the biggest stars in rugby to go out there. If he cracks it in America, boys, <sighs> next level. Good luck to him. Oh mate, absolutely. Very. very- Good luck to him. Very good luck. Sincerely. Well, let's get back to another... Well, we touched upon its controversial moment and something that could have, again, decided an outcome and perhaps luckily it didn't. But um, the red card, uh, Max, take us through what happened and why it was controversial at all. Uh, Curtis Langdon's coming in for a clean. On the way down, though, he struck the defender on the floor in the breakdown with his knee and then as he's come to finish the clean he's hit him again in the head with his knee that he's finishing the clean on uh, obviously to me it looks as if he doesn't know but then Don- Donegan made a point O'Callaghan the commentator he made actually quite a good point that he would have felt his, his knee hitting his head the first time so He'd have had an awareness of him being on the floor, which does make, which kind of makes it interesting. But uh, I'm not so sure. What do you reckon, Ryan? What's your take on it? Well, I had to go back and have another look at this because, at first, like you said, planted foot, Tom Ahern's come down. He's hit his head off his knee. Effectively, by the looks of it, it looks inconspicuous. It looks like he's fallen. He's he's banged his head off of his knee. So. Mm. At that moment, I'm like, there's nothing really too bad there. It doesn't look like it's it's not great, but it looks a bit clumsy, not really his fault. But it's the second, exactly what you said, the second bite of the cherry. It almost looks like he then drives his knee towards his face. And I'm not saying, it, you know, I can't say for sure, but 
when you look at it, if you really go back and look at it a second time and watch that second action, it does look a little bit naughty. A little bit naughty, Max. So, uh, oh, yeah. something, we hate to throw people under the bus. Yeah, but... Something a Ryan Wilson would do. <laughs> yeah, it's just too wrong. If you wanted, no. if you wanted to no. get Omani, if you wanted a knee, big Petey in the face, that's how you do it. Right or wrong? <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. Me, me, me and Big Pete, me and Big Pete the Gardener are mates. I would have gone in with a little bit, something a little bit more subtle, like a forearm or an elbow rush in there. But yeah, oh, it okay. uh, it does look a little bit cheeky, so. I, uh, I think he could be in trouble for that one. So when you look at the two red cards, mm. you're probably going, yeah, okay. The first one for your big fella, Caulfield. He, uh, I think he's unlucky there. I think that one at the weekend for Northampton, not a great look. So what do you think of? Um, so obviously there was a lot of there was some uproar when Sam Graham crossed off the mall and Antoine Frisch sort of slid across his face as he touched the ball down. Sam Graham then clutches his face. Um, I don't think anything really came of that at all, but there's a big argument to be said that people just want consistency. These sort of huge oversights paired with things that are happening like Josh Caulfields, etc., cetera, um, are making sort of a mockery of our great game of rugby union. Thoughts on that, Ryan? Well, my thoughts on whatever happened last week at Glasgow. Was it that was that last week? Glasgow it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Um after that after that try was chalked off right at the end of the game. Like that's an inconsistency. That's a law that people are looking at going, Oh well we'll only give it because it's there. So oh, I dunno. I did see it. Um I think it's because Frisk I think the chat is that he's got previous of doing like little cheap shots like that. Um, is why I think people are getting upset as well on Twitter about it. There's like people saying, oh, he does it all the time. He, when's he going to start? You know, when are they going to... Rich. Bro, I never got that vibe from him. All. I saw something on Twitter, so it must be true. It must be true. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I never got that vibe from him. At he was the nicest guy. Yeah, but... Those are the ones you got to Some of the nice guys on the yeah. field are very different. You know, you cross that white white line, mate. Yeah. You can be a different animal. <laughs> The Wilson being a perfect example of that. Uh, in any case, we let's let's talk a bit about our brothers at Bath. A hell of a game. I mean, obviously Toulouse are doing what they continue to do in what is, I think, Antoine Dupont's last match before he turns his hand at Seven's glory. Um, how, how do we think? You know, Bath taking a lot from that defeat. I mean, we're drawing with twenty minutes to go. You know, is that the sort of game where you, you, you actually learn a lot more about yourselves coming up against that type of opposition and really going toe-to-toe -to -toe for so much of it? Well, you saw you saw the boys when we obviously did the Christmas special um, mm. with Cam and Ollie, Lawrence and Finn. And the way they spoke about it and said, you know, they try and stay the same for every game. So if they have a big win, it's, you know, it's pretty much the same. If they, they lose, they, they don't really get themselves down too much. So there'll be that reaction. But they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Toulouse for a good 60-odd minutes, didn't they? And... They were clinging into that game, but to lose at home just... And now that now that's what I'm talking about, these home ties. To make sure you get home 16 is so important because that carries on, obviously, through the tournament up until the final. So, boys, we had him on a few weeks ago. I reckon he was one of the best episodes we'd done because he was so fucking hilarious. I think there's a chance our old mate Blair Kinghorn could be on for winning a Champions Cup here. Imagine moving halfway through the season. Someone pays you out your bloody salary... Gives you a load of money, gives you a little Airbnb down in Toulouse. The next thing, you're on the road to winning the Champions Cup. It's <laughs> oh my god! I'm actually trying to look for the. Um, I'm trying to look. So Toulouse have got Racing, it, which is easy. But who have who have Bath got? Bath have got Exeter down there. Bath going clean up against Exeter. Exeter have just been pummeled. I know they had a younger team out against Bayonne. Bayonne cleaned them up, but. Bath win that one. I reckon we see a quarterfinal of Toulouse versus Bath again. I reckon it's happening again. It's a rematch and they go over there. Oh, you, oh my God, what is going on? Because I was thinking out of the two teams, it would have been Toulouse and Bath, but that's, that's fucked it because they're going to meet each other in the quarterfinal now. I mean, that game, if you play that a few times, I think Bath wins it as well. So there was a lot of opportunities for Bath to win that game. I think it was just a little bit of sort of 
five, ten minutes of capitulation there at the end, but I can see Bath coming away from that game with a lot of confidence, knowing that they could they can take a scalp out of them, especially given Toulouse's form so far in this Investec Champions Cup. Um, talking points uh, for Josh Bayless coming back from injury for a start against the European Giants. Obviously going to be one of the ones to watch in that Scotland squad coming into the Six Nations, but he was absolutely wonderful. Um, I used to call him nobody back in the academy days at Bath because nobody's perfect. Bloke was, you just knew he was going to be greatness. Freaky athlete, fast, very nice, handsome, uh, articulate. Uh, <laughs> he's got everything. Got everything. Lovely bloke. What a Lovely lush bloke. guy. <laughs> no, he's so lush. It's, yeah, it's actually so annoying. <laughs> so annoying. I was just like, oh, when I was, I was like approaching the sort of late twenties. I was like looking at this kid. I was like, ah, you get your whole life ahead of you, boy. But yeah, um, <laughs> great, great lad. I thought Beno Urbano, obviously does that performance after he sort of gave Aldegheri a lot of problems. Obviously, French tight head, not the starting one, but he gave Aldegheri a lot of questions and trouble in that game, uh, coming close to scoring a second try after his first off the back of that more quite integral to Bath's attack as well as be one of the sort of leading carriers for them in this in this league so far. It'll be interesting to see where England go with the loose head selection, seeing as Ellis Gensch has been injured for a while. Joe Marler obviously also playing well, but he's approaching 35. Will Beno Urbano get a shot at that starting role for England? That'd be cool. I'd love to see that. I think he's been been brilliant. Doesn't give much away in the scrums. And when it's on, he's he, he gets a lot of dominance there for, for, for Bath. So, yeah. Um, Max, game. Max, re- rewind that. Mm. So you, you, but so what you're saying is, you reckon after that, you so Bath obviously. Yeah, I reckon after that, I reckon after that, Bath think they can beat him. Well, so you reckon Bath do Exeter in this last sixteen to lose, beat Racing, and then you reckon Bath go there and beat them in the quarterfinals. I'm not saying that they'll definitely beat them. What I'm saying is, I believe they've come away with that with a real sense of proper belief now that. They are at the table with the big boys and they have the calibre of weaponry to take down such a huge, hideous monster in DuPont, Miyafu, uh, all of those boys. They can do it. I absolutely believe in it. Right, there you have it. Max Leif says it. I think it's probably a good time to to have a quick chat around Captain Fantastic and... What a turnaround. Remarkable. You know, just over 12 months ago, he's not picked for rugby reasons by the same coach, by your old coach, Tooney, by Gregor Townsend. And boom, now he's a captain. Is he going to make a good captain, Wills? Yes. I think it's an, a wonderful decision. Co-captains, let's not forget Rory Darge of Glasgow Warriors. Um, between those two. You've got a back and a forward. I love the idea of co-captains. I think every time, when I was captain, the best time was when it was co-captains. Callum Gibbons and myself. Takes a lot of pressure off both players. Uh, Gregor Townsend's got the option to pick one or the other, so it doesn't mean they have to play. But when Rory Darge is fit and ready to go, he starts for Scotland now, every time. He starts all day long. Um, And he's one for the future. They're looking to the future with Rory Darge. But Finn at the moment, the way he is, you know, the way he's pulling the strings... He's um he's definitely the right candidate. And, you know, a little bit Jamie Ritchie will obviously be disappointed, but was he gonna start every game? Probably not. Um and that's where I think Gregor might have been looking at it again. I need to know that my captain's gonna start every single game. Finn when he's fit, Rory Dyes when he's fit, they will start. And uh I think it's a good call, a good thing for Scotland, so we'll see how it goes. Guys, how weird is it when a captain is changed? So when in that particular instant, he's gone from leading and giving the conversations and, and being the kind of figurehead for Scottish rugby and probably in there potentially hammering players or not hammering or whatever it is from that. And then you're being pulled back into the ranks. Is it bizarre? Well, I've, I've, boys, I've, I've, been in, I've been in the shoes that you talk of. I have literally physically been in the boots when Franco Smith came in and went, <laughs> cheers, mate, and just brings Carl Stain in. And then I'm back down into the trenches with the 
with the minions, Max. It's a horrible place to be. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that is that's weird. But if a guy sticks around in the team, he still is a leader. They still speak. I, I still feel they have the same like presence and influence in in that locker room. But if they're put into bin juice, that's it, it becomes rather difficult. If that's what happened to you. Yeah, I was I was pretty much chucked into the bin juice. Um, but no, you're right. Like you. And everyone always talks about it. you have your leadership groups, and Finn and Dodge were already part of that leadership group, and and Jamie Ritchie was the man on the match day that would have gone out and sort of spearheaded it and spoke to the referees. But um, yeah, it won't be that weird. It'll be all right. But Finn will be good. I think he's got a good relationship with the referees, and the referees want to have a good relationship with Finn because they love him. So I genuinely think that is where he'll be really good with the refs because he'll have a laugh and he'll have a joke with them and he'll chat to them and tends to see the most of the referees as well. So um, leave players like Jamie Ritchie to play right on the edge. Leave Finn Russell to charm the referees and bribe them with a bit of cash. <laughs> let's move on to... Well, firstly, let's let's give the dues to our... You know, the congratulations to, to Racing and to Munster for storming into the next round of the Champions Cup despite just the one win uh, each. Uh, but with all of that in mind, we know who's into the round of 16 now, boys. And there are some uh, really tasty ties to tuck into when uh, when Champions Cup rugby returns. What are you most looking forward to? Which one you really got your eye on? Ryan, apart from Glasgow, which one have you really got your eye on? Stormers, La Rochelle, away in Stormers over in uh, Cape Town for La Rochelle, who haven't really been firing that well, have they? But then they... They turned it on against Sale, demolished Sale up there in uh, in Manchester. Um, Ronan Nogara spoke afterwards. He actually, it's quite good if you go and look it up. That was a very good, very good speech, and I really agree with that. It was all about man management, and I was absolutely on board, and it was brilliant. I love when that man talks. He's very articulate, quite interesting. He's clearly a, a deep thinker in terms of um, performance and. And psychology, and it's um, it was it was very fun. Just gives you a brief insight into it. that. For me, is a big one. Uh, La Rochelle going over to Stormers um, to 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 go and do the job, and then we'll see how they go. That's the one I'm looking forward to. Bordeaux Saris should be interesting. Will there's a big question about the gumption and the grit of the Saris team. Can they come back and right the wrongs of the the shellacking they took? Down at the Del Mar, it'll be it'll be very interesting, and uh, it will show sort of the integrity that the Saris team has. I think it'll be it'll be um, insightful. I think Bordeaux are a, a, a significant threat to to the La Rochelle reign and could be a, a contender uh, come the end. So it'll be, that's going to be a very um, very interesting matchup: Saracens versus Bordeaux Beckler. Don't we think it's a bit of a? Sh- it's a bit weird. Yeah, I agree with you, Mark. Why? Why? Why are they playing each other? Shouldn't they not be able to play each other? They played them fourteenth of January, so we're talking a week ago, oh, and then yeah, they're going to yeah. play them again. Now I know not till April, but still, I mean that they're, they're, <laughs> it's kind of uh, bizarre. Yeah, well, that that's happening with Northampton versus Munster as well. They've literally just played that game, Northampton Munster now. And they're playing that again in the last 16. And Leinster versus Leicester is another one where they're playing it straight back to back. So it doesn't make sense. Let's quickly go through these, Matt. You give me your predictions. So Toulouse or Racing? Toulouse. Exeter or Bath? Bath. So they are Toulouse, Bath, quarterfinal one. Bordeaux, Saris? I'm thinking Bordeaux. Quinns, Glasgow. Quins, they're on fire at the moment. They've come into some serious form. I think that's what that's so one of the thinking, tighter games, but I'm thinking Quins come out on top on that one. So you're thinking Quins versus Bordeaux in quarter final four. Leinster versus Leicester. Hey, Leinster. Stormers versus La Rochelle. Oh God, that's a weird one. Uh, I'm gonna go. It's a. Is it a Cape Town? Is it? No, I'm gonna go with La Rochelle still. I think La Rochelle are coming back. I think they 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 know what's on the line now. Backs against the wall. Cool. Yeah, Final two, you've got down as Leinster versus La Rochelle. Northampton versus Munster at Northampton. Northampton. Bulls versus Leon in Pretoria. Bulls. Northampton Bulls. So you've got Ooh. Northampton versus Bulls as quarterfinal three. 
They are. Max's predictions for the Champions Cup quarterfinals. Right, away from the Champions Cup, boys. Big, big news down under from the Aussie camp. Joe Schmidt heading up the Wallabies. Wow. Mm. What do we think? Ryan. <laughs> it just made that Lions tour a little bit more tasty, didn't it? Because you know that he's going to go and get a little bit more out of those players than our old mate Eddie fucking Jones did. So, yeah, interesting news. Good news. I think uh, anyone in Australia will be happy with that. The cat man, as they know him as Schmidt, he is, uh, he's back in rugby. He's back over there. And, Why is he the cat um, man? God, I hope he's got... Uh, I can't remember. We had someone here once that told us that he loved cats and it was all a lie. Um, and that he had cats on his... Um, he had a cat in his car and it used to sit on the back... Um, you know, the, the, the parcel shelf, shelf of his car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. But all I all I hope for is that he's got some fucking factor 70 because I, I reckon Schmidt burns. And uh, down under, there's a fucking hole in the ozone layer. So watch out, mate. But... Good for Australian rugby. Look forward to seeing him go down there and see what he does. I know it's going to be good. I thought, well, they got the right man. They've like literally, they couldn't have got. A, that's like the dream matchup. I think. I just want to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you again to our ongoing sponsor, that is Wolf Craig Distillers. You can head over to the Wolf Craig website, which is Max Wolfcraig.com. And you can go and bag yourself one of their lovely whiskies or even the gin, which uh, I must say I'm looking forward to tucking into in February the 1st because I'm off the hard stuff. But mm. thank you again to Wolf Craig Distillers. To all our fabulous listeners, we've got a extra special treat for you. We have this Wednesday all the juicy gossip and fables from the man, the myth, the Earl of Marseille, England's World Cup saviour, Ben Earl. This Wednesday, eyes and ears posted, more or nothing, with Ben Earl exclusively. Ta-ta for now. Exactly. Well, sadly, that is all the time we've got left for this week. A huge thank you to Ryan, to Max. We have not had any favours technologically, sadly. So um, I'm sure it comes out beautifully. But uh, it has been a frustrating evening, but still always fun to hang out with you all. But we will see you all next week look out for the ben earl episode it is a cracker I know. bye I know. more or nothing